Hi, and welcome to part six, which is right now the last part that I have planned for the Active Directory dashboard with the PS Write HTML. This feature is actually a user requested feature for adding um, specific OUs to monitor inside of our dashboard. So it's going to be looking for um, users that are inside of specific OUs and displaying all the users for those specific OUs. And what's nice about this is because we already get all of the users um, and we already bring in, uh, although we didn't specify it in user properties, we don't see the distinguished name, uh, but we can actually easily use distinguished names to actually just borrow off of our users that we already brought in. So let's actually, let's take a look and let's see how we can actually achieve um, this OU monitoring for our Active Directory dashboard. So what I wanna first show here is actually just my Active Directory environment. So I can show you guys the different uh, groups that we actually have, or the different OUs, sorry, that we actually have set up, uh, which is actually right here. So we have the New York, we have on hold for deletion, and we have the Toronto groups here. So we're actually going to be monitoring the on hold for deletion, but I'm going to show you guys that you can actually easily add New York or Toronto as an OU to the monitor this way, because we're going to be doing it through the array list. And once again, this actually does take into account basically that this would be something in all of your domains that you want to look at. Um, so you only have to configure it for one and it will do it on all assuming that all of your domains are configured with like the same OUs, which I know that might not be the case for all places. Um, but in that case, just put in the OUs that you really need to. Maybe you'd want to split up maybe your uh, dashboard a little bit more, maybe create another tab um, to only display the OUs that you specifically monitor. Uh, that's going to be really a kind of more of a design um, question more so but let's actually take a look and let's see what we can actually do here so what i'm actually going to do is create a new variable here that we are actually going to go ahead and call ou or ou's to monitor and i'm going to make this equal to an array here and our array is and you can even say an if statement in here and um just have an if statement. So actually what we can actually do is let's actually do that here. So let's say if um, domain, we're just gonna see what the domain full name is here. I'm gonna say if the domain is equal to, um, to jacked.ca, the OUs to monitor is going to be equal to an array here and we're going to put that for on hold for deletion that's what our ou name is so in here you would have maybe a switch statement or you can have else if statements if the other domains are present put this ou to monitor and then what you can do is actually just on your last when you create the object here for all your domain info you're going to create a new member and you're just going to add ou's ou's to monitor in here and then you're going to go ahead and store your ou's to monitor in here so now if we actually go ahead and we run all of this code so this will actually make it more specific if you have multiple domains at first i only made it because i only have one domain uh, so it kind of just worked out fine without the if statement. Uh, but if you do have multiple domains, maybe you want to monitor different OUs in each one. Uh, you can easily do that that way. So there we have our OUs to monitor. We can actually see our OU right there. And then all we're going to do now is we're actually going to go ahead and we are going to create our new section, which is going to be used to display all of that information here. So we're going to have a new section. We're going to change that for computers. We're going to change that to OUs to monitor. And we're going to actually display it for now. Um, and then we can actually delete this computers table. We're going to leave this panel here for now. And now what we actually want to do 
is we want to do a for each OU in domain dot um, OUs to monitor. And what this is going to do is now we are going to say a new HTML section with the header text. We're going to put that with our OU. We're going to have an open and closing curly bracket. We're just going to stuff the panel in here for now. We're just going to remove the table. So now if we actually run this code here, we should actually see our page now. And we have the OUs to monitor, and we actually have that OU that we specified. So now let's see if we actually go ahead and add a new OU in here. So let's add our OU in here. We're going to say New York. And we go ahead and we run this now. Now we will see our on hold for deletion and New York. So it, it is working. So we are able to actually reference these. So that's perfect. So let's go back down to where we're trying to display the information. And all we're going to do is in this panel, what I actually like to do is I like to do it in the for each, not in the HTML sections, is we're going to grab, we're going to create a new variable called users table. And we're going to make that equal to user. We're going to pipe that to where object distinguished name dash like. We're going to do a pair of double quotes here. We're going to do a star star. In between the two stars, we're going to do a dollar sign OU to reference our OU object, which is going to be what OU we're looking for. And that should be good for now. And then in our panel, all we're going to do is we're going to create a table. We're going to reference a data table. We're going to reference our users table. And we are going to hide the footer and hide buttons. Let's go ahead and let's hit run here. Now this will actually display us. Uh, we actually don't see the users here. Um, so let's see why that is. Um, so let's go ahead and let's see what OU is equal. OU is on hold for deletion. Uh, oh, and that's because we specified user and not users. Um, our variable is actually called users here. So that was a uh, just a little typo on my part here. So now if we actually go ahead and we run it, we actually see our users. Now we actually notice that it looks pretty ugly. We're getting a lot of information. It's not very easily readable compared to our users up here. But we actually have one other thing left to do after the where object. And that's going to be another pipe and our select object statement. And now we wanna pick the properties that we actually want to display. Um, so this is where I usually just kind of scroll back up here and go up to our disabled users. Now, of course you can actually make this an array um, as well and have a, an array where you can just reference all the time what properties you want. The reason why I actually have them written like this is I actually like to have some different properties uh, for some of these, but also what you can do is you can create a base array and then just add um, specific properties for some. That would be uh, definitely some room for improvement on this script. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's run what we have here and let's see what it looks like. There it is. And we can see now our information is looking actually pretty good. We can easily read. And you can easily hide this OUs to monitor and just have the OUs, but you kind of lose a little bit of what this actually stands for. I like having them. It's just a, it's a little bit nicer uh, when it comes to knowing what these boxes for on hold for deletion and New York stand for. So this is our dashboard. We have a lot of information in here. This has been quite a long series. So hopefully you guys can uh, take this away and be able to add some value to your home labs or your work environment as well. Now, if you do have any other questions, please let me know in the comments down below. And as soon as I can get to it, I can add some more things into this dashboard. 
Now, there will be a new series also coming out very soon, which is going to be the PowerShell Universal series, um, which we are actually working on them actually together on the live streams. And then we're, I'm going to be curating some videos directly for the channel. So it's not having to watch two hour videos for about a 10, 15 minutes worth of actual value there. Um, but if you do want to see like how I kind of learned something new, uh, PowerShell Universal is completely new to me. Um, it was the first time that I used it on the live stream and we are kind of just figuring it out together and be able to piece things together. And we're actually building an application on the live stream, which we will be designing on this channel in a tutorial series as well. We're kind of making a active directory help desk tool. Um, and we're using PowerShell Universal to host our APIs. So this way you're not actually bugged down to PowerShell Universal to design your tool. You can actually design a GUI tool using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript if you have those skill sets. And then you just call your APIs that are running on PowerShell Universal. That would actually be kind of the end goal. Um, but we're going to try building the whole thing on PowerShell Universal since you do have the ability to create apps. I want to try out some of those options there. So once again, if you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.